Hey guys, welcome back to Uncanny Channel. Happy Halloween. It is actually the 30th that I'm filming this, but it was, it's supposed to rain tomorrow and so there's all the trick-or-treating tonight and so I don't have a costume, but I'm some kind of autumn thing that I'm still wearing after like a hundred kids across our front door. <laughs> Today's gonna be a little bit different because I plan to talk about the different true stories behind your favorite scary movies, but I didn't plan it at all. And I asked like on October 3rd for you to send me responses and so like that. So I only had two that really had um, actual like true stories behind them and everything else was kind of just its own creative thing, which is good for like creativity, but not good for my plan. So I'll plan better next year. And in lieu of doing one of those, um, I have my husband, Chris, here and uh, um we have this month been like going through some like scary movies that he's never seen some that i've never seen and we were joking about like how they kind of teach you like the little rules of like how to survive basically buying a house that has a ghost or a demon in it and we were joking about what some of those rules might be so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the like rules for buying a demon house <laughs> uh with you guys and kind of like you know, what horror movies taught us about buying a demon house. So here are the rules. So the ones that we pull the rules from, some of them kind of like overlap with other movies, but the main ones are The Omen, Paranormal Activity, uh, Amityville Horror. Yeah. Who are some of the other ones? The Conjuring. The Conjuring and um, Poltergeist, kind of. Kind of. Even though it's, I we, neither of us had ever seen Poltergeist mm -hmm. before. And so it wasn't what we thought that it was going to be. It's kind of like different. But uh, yeah, so but some of the things kind of overlap there as well. So rule number one is trust your little kids. Little kids in every horror film that we watch seem to have some level of intuition where they could see the haunt or the ghost or in one case, the alien first. Yeah. Um, so yeah, always trust the little kid. They know what they're talking about. Similarly, trust the dog also. The dog is always barking at something that is going wrong. And for some reason, all of the families and all of the films that we watch completely ignored the dog basically screaming at them. It's, it's always like as they're trying to like cross the th threshold, it's like as they're trying to cross the threshold mm -hmm. into the house, the dog is like losing its mind and like freaking out and like they like drag it by the collar into the house. And I'm like, that should be your first sign that something's wrong. Like even if it's not a ghost, like you should at least worry about like gas or something but something. like if if it's if it's if you if it's a house that you're moving into that's in a horror movie yeah it's, it's probably a ghost it's, so it's unusual for a dog to not want to go where its owner is going so if you are walking into a house and the dog is refusing to follow you <laughs> i mean there's ghosts number two if the house seems too good for the price it is because it has a demon yep we were very recently first time home buyers and you know when a price is too good when a price is too good just say no yeah if all the other houses in the block are like three or four times the price of the house that you're buying and in equal size or smaller it's not a good house mm -hmm. if it has three stories you have twice the ghosts yep. if you have an attic that you're using as a bedroom or a cellar of any kind you have a ghost for sure. The Conjuring, Paranormal Activity, uh, The Omen, um, Amityville Horror, Poltergeist. All of these homes had an upstairs and or a downstairs. Um, I will never not buy a one-story house. And <laughs> Now. Now. <laughs> and so long as I stick to a one-story house, I probably won't have to worry about ghosts. Um, speaking of house buying, um, one of the things, and I don't know if this is just the time that all of these films were made, but if you are alive in the 70s, don't buy a house. Yeah, not if you were alive in the 70s. If if it is currently the 1970s, yes. don't buy a house. This is rule 2A. Like, don't, just wait till the 80s because there are way fewer Wolfman guys apparently in the 80s. The housing market's going to be better in the 80s anyway, trust. Those are the years that baby boomers think we're that we are living in right now yeah, and that's was... why we're killing industries like napkins <laughs> <laughs> and the diamond industry yeah because we're because because we're putting all our money into real estate because we're broke oh yeah or that rule number three don't keep anything from the murder house that you've purchased i don't care how nice the antique furniture is how awesome of a collectible doll you found in the cellar 
get rid of it. Cover it with salt and burn it with fire. I've been watching too much uh, paranormal. Uh, what is it? Uh, supernatural. Supernatural. <laughs> watching too much supernatural. Just salt and fire is the answer for everything. Yeah, if you think it's valuable, I sell it at like antiques roadshow or something. But don't like keep it in the house and like see if it'll age with value. Because like the eighth. What? Like people? No, I'm just thinking about the poor guy at Antiques Roadshow who buys it, and now he's cursed because you are greedy. <laughs> like, oh, but, but like, if he's he buy, I mean, if you're buying something at Antiques Roadshow, you've got, you I mean, you've got your your like procedure. I'm sure somebody showed up to get like their teacups appraised, and now they're leaving with your cursed ass pocket watch <laughs> from the Civil War. <laughs> well, like, that's that's all you now. <laughs> Maybe it's like a union ghost or something. Maybe it's a union ghost. <laughs> well, it was brother against brother, Chris. Everyone's got baggage. A lot of baggage in the Civil War. A lot of baggage in the Civil War. Anyway. Rule number four. <laughs> <laughs> Adding on to the the end of rule three is yes. if you get rid of everything in the house and then you move in and find like a cool trinket stuffed in like an air vent or something, put it back. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, I'm going to pocket this and like show my friends. Put it back. Maybe the friends can peer through the vent and look at it, but don't touch it. Leave it where it is because if you move it, you're probably going to unleash something and it's uh, going to be hard to get rid of after that. So let's consider this rule three A. Can I start adding letters too? Yeah. 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 Three, yes. Rule, rule three is don't keep stuff. Rule three A is don't touch stuff. Yes. Don't touch stuff. Don't touch stuff. Can I add a rule three B? I know I'm going off the rails. Rule three B. If there is a secret passage or a secret compartment in your oh, house yeah. that you didn't know about don't go in it don't let your kids go in it like seal it up pour salt in it and burn it no don't burn it because the rest of your house that's will be the open. house yeah. that's well it depends on how well, high the haunt is you mean you may have to burn it anyway um so. but no don't let your kids play in it um you don't want them you know like screwing around with demons um i guess or no ghosts. i mean you usually don't not Usually. until they're at least teenagers, because then that's a whole other movie. <laughs> then it's Quidja. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Ouija, but if you got the joke, you got the joke. If you didn't get the joke, bah. Can we link to the video with the Quidja? Quidja below. Rule four. 3 a.m. is not your friend. Nope. If you wake up all the time at 3 a.m., go back to sleep. If you can't sleep, read a book. But don't wander around the house at 3 a.m. If it's at 3.15 especially don't walk around the house and if it's a 315 just burn the house there's gonna be a lot of rules whose solutions are don't do the thing and burn the house yes <laughs> it's like... uh if it's 316 the only thing that exists at that time is stone cold steve austin stone cold <laughs> stone cold <laughs> Austin 316 says i just exercised your home wait until at least after 4 a.m rule number five your child's imaginary friend is not your friend. Your child's imaginary friend... Okay, so when your kid starts talking about an imaginary friend that they have, it is in your best interest to ask your kid everything that you can about that imaginary friend. Especially if they got that imaginary friend right after you moved into your new house. Because mm -hmm. if they've had their imaginary friend like bubbles or whatever since two years and then you move into a new house and they stay, that's fine. If, they, if you move in and all of a sudden they have bubbles, now you have to be inquisitive mm -hmm. about the friend. Bubbles is a ghost and or demon. One thing you can do if your kid has an imaginary friend, start asking your kid for information that would be useful if it does turn out that imaginary friend is a ghost or a demon. What are your friend's goals? What are your friend's weaknesses? What is your friend <laughs> most afraid of? Do they have any vulnerabilities that you might be able to exploit one day in a fight and or exorcism? Did they fight for the Confederacy or the Union? These are important things that you need to know. <laughs> don't talk to the friend directly. Mm -mm. Uh, don't engage Sage. Oh my God. Uh, rule number six, you don't always have to investigate. If, you, if you're if you hearing noises, maybe you just walk away from it. Let it go. Because the pattern we noticed most often was that people would not only be like, huh, that was an odd sound. Let me check it out and also make a really big deal of it so that this thing gets really high on attention and starts to like attention whore out. So then <laughs> like escalate and then everyone's possessed and the house is on fire. <laughs> That's just how it escalates. That, that's how it works. And then the house gets burned down. 
Don't uh, don't give it attention. Just starve it to death for attention. Yeah. Also, if you are going to investigate, don't investigate. If you are going to investigate, don't go. Hello. Hello. Hello? <laughs> Who who's there? Because it's not going to tell you, but it's going to mm -hmm. do something really upsetting, like roll a ball into the room, so you know who it is, but it don't have to tell you. Yep. Yeah. Or you're basically just like, hello. I know you're here, and I would like a pop scare right now. <laughs> Rule number seven, don't try to rationalize something that is irrational. But like actually irrational, like, oh, I hear a wind howling. Uh, it must be a draft. That's a good explanation. Oh, I saw a chair lift up off the ground by an unseen force and thrown across the room. It must be a draft. That's not a rational explanation it's for that. Draft. It's actually a situation where a demon might be the more rational explanation, and you shouldn't force it. If you have to force it to be not a demon, it's definitely a demon, and you should get out and burn it down. Rule number eight. There is always somewhere else you can stay. Always. I never understand, and, and this isn't like all of the films, in Paranormal Activity, in uh, the Amityville Horror, in Poltergeist, all of these people stay in their homes despite everything telling them to leave yeah like and for a while like not just like we stay for the next couple of days to make sure but it's like like kids getting attacked mm -hmm. like things being shattered and they're just like oh well, you're sticking out we have nowhere to go yeah you give somewhere to go mm -hmm. you've got a mom or a friend or a co-worker like you got so someone mm -hmm. or some way you have a car you can probably sleep in you don't have to stay <laughs> if it gets bad but they always want to. They always want to stay until it's like we either leave tonight or we die. No, they always. They're always like, "I got this house for such a low price, <laughs> and it's such a good wow, location. that's a low price. <laughs> this house was such a good bargain. I don't want to leave it." And, and they're like, "This is our dream house." I'm like, "Is it? I'm. I'm. Is it I'm your dream house with?" With everything, with everything that's happening, the dog has been murdered. <laughs> is it your dream house still? Birds are throwing it's, themselves it's like, at becomes, the windows. <laughs> it becomes even more my dream house the more graves I get to plant in my backyard. So leave the house. You, you don't have to stay there. Let the ghost have it. The last and final rule is rule number nine. Know when to trust your friends and when they can SDF you. In all of these films, there are friends that are like, oh, no, girl, you're crazy. There's nothing going. What do you mean there's ghosts? There's no such thing as ghosts. Have you been sleeping all right? Is there something else going on? Are you feeling okay? Are, are you, you having problems with your husband slash boyfriend slash fiance slash whoever you're living with right now? Are you taking marijuana? Are you doing marijuana pills? Are you? Am I? No, no, no. I'm, I'm in, <laughs> as, <Are> you... <laughs> as though I'm asking was, the character in the I film. I was like... <laughs> what are marijuana tablets? I'm too anxious to be on marijuana. <laughs> if you like tell them all the deal and you have, especially if you have like evidence when you're like, look at this video I took of this thing bursting in the flames for no reason. And they're like, I don't know, Andrea, are you, are you sure you're all right? Sometimes then, stuff just catches on fire, Andrea. Maybe you shouldn't be such a wimp about it. Yeah. You know, maybe you should sleep more. Yeah. Then don't trust that friend. Mm-mm. Bad friend. If your friend is, though, like, mm, I don't know, but here's a priest you can call just in case. Trust that friend. That yep. friend's on your side. So. Am I supposed to have a friend that just has, like, a priest number, like, in hand ready to go at any moment? Yeah, no. Oh, no, everyone's got that friend who's mm -hmm. like, oh, I've got a guy for that. And mm -hmm. that guy is a priest. Or, yeah. oh, I've got a guy for that. That guy is a demonologist. <laughs> Let me pull out my Rolodex and get this demonologist <laughs> for you. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta, I'm getting I'm getting to uh, to, to the peas for paranormal. <laughs> well, no, if I if I go into like if I go into the like the local Catholic church and I'm like, hey, I need to I need to do an exorcism, probably the the little lady behind the desk is gonna be like, oh, let me pull out my Rolodex, and it's like a huge. Oh, Rolodex. Well, well, like you can't do this. You have to do, turn the crank. You have on the to, side. yeah. She has the crank exactly, and like she's got like four guys she can choose from. And she's like, well, tell me, do you know? What, give me some more details so I know what specialist to send you to. Does this demon <laughs> seem angry or mischievous? <laughs> oh, also, uh, if a religious leader, such as a nun or a priest, enters your home and like their face starts to melt or some shit. Ooh, yeah. yeah that's a big yeah. red flag. Friends that are friends that are in the clergy who get sick 
definitely trust them. Yeah. Trust their trust them when they're like, I have to leave here and take that as I as like parentheses because there's a demon. Mm -hmm. Also trust that uh well I guess it could be a gas leak, but it's probably a demon gas. If someone walks in your house and gets sick immediately. Yeah, but specifically a clergy person, I don't think that... No, yeah, I mean, the gas doesn't discriminate. Yeah, I have a hard time believing that a nun <clears throat> is more susceptible to carbon monoxide poison than, say, my neighbor Joe. Oh, it depends on how long your neighbor Joe's been exposed to carbon monoxide poison. And whether or not Joe's a priest. Yeah. Okay. All right. So those are the rules that we came up with from all the movies that we watched. Those are the kind of the themes that we've noticed when we were watching it, and we'd be like, well, yeah, trust the kid. I mean, based on the other four movies we saw, you should be trusting the kid. Listen to the dog. It's 3 a.m. Go back to freaking sleep. So those are the ones that we came up with. What rules do you guys uh, feel like you've learned from horror movies? Either, you know, apply to real life or apply to, like, fun, like, horror movie scenarios. Like, oh, I bought a demon murder ghost house or whatever. Uh, leave those uh rules down below and let us know what you think about the rules that we came up with happy halloween i wish that spooky month had worked out better as far as my video went but i will be more prepared next year and i'll know more what i'm doing next year and uh either way happy halloween it's spooky month it's about to be november which is a lot of family month stuff so you know family month mm. and i will uh see you guys next time like this video if you enjoyed it uh, subscribe if you haven't already and ding the bell so that you get a notification anytime I post a new video instead of relying on your feed because otherwise it may not show up. Who knows? I don't know what the bell does. I'm not a YouTube guy. Uh, it, when you subscribe to someone, you have the option to click the bell. Mm -hmm. And if you click the bell, it gives you a pop-up notification like on Kenny's channel. I was just posting a new video and you can tap it and it'll open the video oh, up for you. Okay. Sometimes it tells me now, I'll be like, I can tap the bubble in my notification box and it'll automatically cast it to living room TV, which is weird. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. But... Uh, so that's what the bell does. Cool. I work for a technology <laughs> company. I have no idea how YouTube works. <laughs> Where do you fit the VHS tape in your phone? How do you cast this Hocus Pocus VHS? <laughs> do you mean cast like a spell? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to uh, call it a day. Um, above all else, whatever else you took in this video, remember that it is a wonderful thing to believe in the unbelievable. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye.